Hi, my name is Phil. I like to talk about politics. In this video, I'd like to discuss the Environment Secretary's refusal to rule out dropping UK food standards, which would allow, amongst other things, chlorinated chicken into the country, as well as to comment on the nature of lies told by different politicians. But first, if you'd like to stay notified of daily news and politics, then please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So, it was always obvious that the UK would have to ditch standards on foodstuffs, as well as other things, in order to get a US trade deal uh, after Brexit. Something that's currently some time off, by the looks of it, there's various political difficulties even getting the talk started, but it has to be faced up to at some point. The fact is that no US president, whether it be Trump or anyone else, is likely to resist the huge farming lobby when it comes to negotiating a trade deal. And what the farming lobby wants, and along with other lobby groups who represent producers, that is, is to sell more of their products, okay? This ultimately means being able to sell currently banned products in the UK. That's the only way they get to increase the number of products they sell. And that will include things like chlorinated chicken. So before I go on, very quickly, what is the problem with it? Because before long, you are going to have government ministers telling you it's actually good for you. They'll tell you that chlorination is a safety mechanism to kill harmful bacteria, which it is. They'll tell you that chlorine water is non-harmful because we use chlorine wash salad in the UK, which is also true. You'll be told that it's all a political stunt, this opposition to chlorinated chicken. I mean, you eat chlorinated salad, what's wrong with chlorinated chicken? And it will all make sense that chlorinated chicken is not, in actual fact, harmful. But what people won't be told is... It's the chlorination that is indirectly harmful. The problem is that US farms who adopt these measures, which is not all of them, of course, do not observe sanitary methods throughout the factory process in the belief that the chlorination kills all the bacteria at the end. They'll just think to themselves, what's the point of cleaning it at every stage? We're just going to wash it with chlorine water at the end. It's all fine. Put it through. It doesn't. Chicken carries some quite unpleasant and above all resistant bacteria that the chlorination cannot deal with adequately. That is why chlorinated chicken is harmful. It's not the chlorination by itself. It's the fact that people have too much reliance on the chlorination to deal with cost cutting earlier on the process. It's also why proportionally many more Americans get seriously ill and die from chicken bugs than in the EU. So, on to the UK government's position. The Environment Secretary, George Eustace, first of all, when asked, said that the government had no plans to lower standards to allow foods like this into the country. Now, without going any further, without asking any further questions, getting any further responses, immediately, if you follow politics, you know that that's political talk for, of course, we're going to let it into the country. When a politician is asked a question such as this, and they really, genuinely don't intend to change policy, they will refute it absolutely, categorically, very strongly. Politicians, and especially ministers, absolutely love being on solid ground. They hardly ever get to be on solid ground. When they are, they love it, and they'll be completely unequivocal about their responses. It's fantastic. Yes, I can give a definite answer to this. Absolutely no chlorinated chicken. A minister who is trying to deceive will just say, We've got no current plans for it. Oh, yeah, we're not planning this. Because that way, when they do change policy, they just get to say, well, we weren't planning on it, but then we were, uh, and there's no demonstrable lie told. It was interesting to note that his predecessor did give that firm, unequivocal commitment that we wouldn't be getting these products in as a result of a US trade deal, because, of course, there the policy probably was genuinely not to. So the message has changed which means so too has the policy. They just don't feel like telling us yet. Eustace also talked about the use of another chemical being used, lactic acid, another clear sign that the harmful nature of the practice will be permitted in the UK. As I said, it's not the chemical that's the problem, but the fact that it encourages cost cutting by not having suitable sanitary procedures earlier in the process. Lactic acid will do no more to kill the bacteria on a filthy carcass than will chlorine. But... They'll, you know, let's say they can't get the public to buy the idea that chlorinated chicken is actually OK. What they'll do is then double down on the emphasis on the chlorination and go, well, this isn't chlorinated chicken. This is using lactic acid, but it's the same process. But in people's minds, it won't be the same thing that received all the bad press and the public will be placated. 
And it is this muddying of the waters by putting emphasis on something that is not the real problem, which will allow the government to go ahead with public approval. But as a last little point here, on the nature of deception, uh, it prompted a question to me on Twitter. Someone was asking me, why he didn't just outright lie like Boris Johnson does? Why didn't he just say, of course we're not going to, and then do it later on anyway? Boris Johnson does this all the time. My response was that Boris Johnson is not a typical politician. Eustace represents much more the norm of, of politics in the UK. Our politicians are, of course, not all honest. This may come as a shock to some of you. Um, some of them will seek to mislead the public at times, but although misleading the public with evasive statements or misrepresentation of statistics seems perfectly acceptable in UK politics, telling an outright false statement of fact is not. They don't like doing it. They won't do it. Boris Johnson is a bit of an outlier, really, in being perfectly happy to tell the most obvious lies, lies which can be proven as such immediately without any shred of shame or fear for the consequences. I mean, after all, if you look at his recent experience, why should he feel any shame? You know, it would actually even suggest that his blatant lies have enhanced, not tarnished, his reputation amongst his supporters. So anyway, I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, then please also click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.